Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are playing another Total War Warhammer 2 Battle Replay, and this one I have a very silly Tomb Kings army um, against Bretonnia. And uh, there's a trend at the moment which uh, people tend to bring a lot of uh, infantry against the Tomb Kings. It's like to swarm in with the infantry um, because, frankly, there's a lot of very good anti large that can be fielded um, against Bretonnia um, as the Tomb Kings. And, you know, who shoved with great bows just get crazy good value against, you know, any knights. It's, uh, it's a bit tough to use a lot of cavalry, so a lot of people are just swarming with infantry now. And archers, so um, this is my build to counter that sort of behaviour. So uh, cheap front line of skeleton warriors, Nehekara warriors in the back, so uh, let these guys get beaten up and take any arrow fire. Then the Nehekara warriors can get in and be, you know, they're better combatants, frankly. Um, so these guys can get in a bit after. Also, set to the Imperishable, on a chariot, obviously, you know. But, uh, I mean, Chariot of the Gods, it is pretty great. And Setra is an absolute powerhouse. He's got some great spells at his disposal. Great abilities. He is really, really dangerous. So, um, you know, good anchor for any army, frankly. Usually people put him on the War Sphinx, but no, no, Chariot, Chariot. This is anti-infantry, this this whole lark. So, uh, but in a big way. I think Chariots, you know, you can run up and down the line. You can get a lot more done than, uh, you know, if you're in a uh, War Sphinx. But the War Sphinx will do, well, hello. That was flashy. Anyway, the War Sphinx will do a lot more damage to sort of single models and lords and things, but uh, I'm just going to keep out of the way of them. Just going to kill everything else. So, also, I have two Caskets of Souls, which is a little bit ridiculous, but also a lot of fun. Um, and they're guarded by these blocks of uh, skeleton spearmen, so they've got some good missile resistance, and frankly, they will take most of the arrow fire. If you're trying to get that, you know, get them that way, and if cavalry charge in, it gives me a long time to react, because it can take a long time to push through all these spearmen. And the casket skulls can, you know, rimber away, which is all good. Also, some more spearmen on the outside. And over here, I have two scorpions that I had hidden in the trees, because they can hide in trees. So they're intercepting these mounted human archers, which is pretty funny. So definitely caught this guy unawares here. But uh, also, he does have the Wardens of Modfort as well. So more, more yeoman archers, but with poison attacks, which is very, very cool. So, um, yeah, kind of nice to have some cavalry, because the rest of his army is infantry, which is pretty great for me. He's got these three um, foot squires in the back. He's got a couple of grail relic ways to make sure no one gets terrified away. And frankly, they can do all right in melee, you know. They get stuck in, and they take a lot of punishment before they go down. So, you know, they're actually pretty reliable to help anchor a front line, not just for the, you know, leadership bonuses and everything. But uh, also, there are they are quite tanky. You've really got to focus them down um, to take them out. So it's actually great backup. But these battle pilgrims, they cut through most Tomb Kings infantry pretty damn well. Maybe not Tomb Guard so much, but that's what the Foot Squires are for. Also, he has a ton of peasant bowmen with uh, one with f uh, nope, two with fire, one with pox. So fire, really good. Enemy lords are weak to fire. Um, as the Tomb King, so that's really handy. And the Pox, great for slowing things down and lowering stats. So really good combination. And in the back, King Luanker. He's on foot, of course, you know, as he always is. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Anyway, he's also got a Paladin, and he has a Damsel of Heavens. So he's got some great abilities here. Uh, Wind Blast is great in this matchup. It does a ton of work. It's kind of ridiculous, honestly. It uh, it tears through all the low-armoured infantry of the Tomb Kings pretty damn well. So, speeding things up. So, uh, obviously, caught these guys out. They're running away terrified, which is a bit of a pity, to be honest. I wish they didn't get terrified and just sat there and took more damage. But no, they're running away, and I won't be able to chase them off, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, these Tomb Scorpions, they're going to be great for dealing with low of the infantry as well. You know, things like Battle Pilgrims, they can't touch Scorpions. They just don't have the armor piercing. So it's pretty great. These guys are very handy. So I'm going to chase them a little bit, but I'm going to get them back into the front line in a second. So the Casket Souls, they're both firing. One is firing at these Foot Squires, one is firing at these. These Foot Squires are getting very lucky, though. They're getting missed a lot. This one, not so much. Yeah, not so much. I mean, let's look at the kills already. We've got uh, 27 and 6. Doesn't seem great yet, but uh, it'll add up, because it's very difficult to stop them, especially with this army. So, uh, pretty great. So I'm going to move forwards a bit, and uh, send my uh, Skeleton Warriors in. Nice hit on those Foot Squires, nice hit on those. And I'm pretty sure I change targeting of one of my Casket Souls onto the next sort of Foot Squires in a second. Or possibly the Archers. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, Cetra is charging straight in. So he's getting stuck in. Arrows starting to fly, which is a bit of a pain. Trying to hit Cetra with those fire arrows. And you see, just a couple of volleys does a fair bit of damage. So I blow them up a bit. These guys start getting hit by the casket souls, and I'm just charging straight through. Here we're going to see a comet Cassandora, which is absolutely lovely. Gotta love that. But uh, these, these archers are in a lot of trouble. Um, yeah, Cetra's pretty good at killing archers, funnily enough. Anyway, so I've got one scorpion in the mix over here, one over here. Obviously, none of this stuff is going to get terrified away. That's fine. I just want it to sit here and get killed. So, uh, a ton of damage. All the archers are getting dealt with. And uh, now Cetra is going to move on to the next unit. So, these guys start charging in, which is beautiful because now they're not even slightly braced. I can charge straight through their lines. That's about, what, 25% of their health gone in one charge. 
And those are foot squires. You don't want them taking that much damage. But the infantry of theirs is winning on this side pretty well. I mean, I only have skeleton warriors in here. And actually, Nekar warriors. But uh, I have used Usex incantation of desiccation and all this stuff to limit their combat abilities. So this stuff will survive longer, basically. It lets me charge in more with Cetra. So Sword of Quran has been used, but he's moving so much, it's not really going to matter much. So he's going to keep running through all this stuff, doing more and more damage. Casket Souls now, shooting into this clump. And it's a pretty juicy clump, for, you know, to be fair. So uh, over here, you know, I've just got my spearmen just chasing around archers, but they just can't get into them. Here, oh my god, that was such a close one. Um, yeah, my all my sphincters tightened when I saw that wind blast. Um, but yeah, it just missed. It was just a little too preemptive. So it just grazed the front, startled them a little bit. If that had hit down the line, they would have pretty much been wiped out by that wind blast. So I was really lucky there. So I'm getting some great hits on all this stuff. Cetra, he's still cruising around. He's going to charge back in. And uh, this paladin's getting bullied by two tomb scorpions now. And the Nehekar warriors are on their own fighting uh, the Grail Reliquary. So that Grail Reliquary is going to get dragged down. The archers are trying to come back, but I'm pretty sure I send uh, one of my casket souls to start bombing them again. But uh, yeah, as you can see, these guys take a lot of damage. I summoned the Ushabti in this blob as well. Because with that anti-infantry, they're just going to cleave through all of this stuff pretty happily. Luan, he's still trying to fight, but... He's just not been on a good target once. There's just nothing he can really attack all that successfully. So, bullying the damsel again. And, uh, I mean, Cetra's doing great. Absolutely love that guy. Anyway, these guys are firing into whatever they can. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's trying to get his battle pilgrims free of these uh, skeleton warriors so he can move on to the next thing. Another wind blast. Did a fair bit of damage. Um, but, again, not the best hit. And, uh, yeah, things are looking pretty dire for Bretonia, let's be honest. Yeah, it's not looking great. Anyway, managed to actually catch out these mounted yeomen. They're trying to shoot into these groups, but as you can see, the casket of souls just taking no damage. Now, all of the arrows are just getting caught on the spearmen's shields, so... Yeah, no damage on the casket of souls. It has 121 kills. This one has 92. It's a bit ridiculous. Cetra now just cruising through the infantry again. You know, no reason not to. These are the only guys that are really getting value in any of combat, because I don't care about my infantry. So, uh, just cruising through all this stuff. You know, more bombing on these. It's uh, a little silly. And Lewin, haven't even touched him. I don't care. I don't care if he's still alive, frankly. Um, I'm just going to wipe out his army. And he can go home as the king that had his entire army wiped out. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, here you can see just the Ushabti in here, just doing too much damage. That damsel's completely screwed. All the infantry ran away from that area. I've still got my two Tomb Scorpions that are very healthy. Um, his paladin got taken out. Yeah, everything. Oh no, there he is. He's still going. But uh, here, nice little explosion. What's nice is that ability procs uh, at whatever position you were when you hit the ability. So, um, it doesn't do it from Cetra. It does it from where you hit the ability. So you can actually just cruise through something, proc the ability, and as you keep moving, the ability will explode. So it's pretty great. I really love it. Anyway, Pyrrhic victory. So, um, yeah, a bit of a whitewash. Very silly army, though. Um, this can be countered, and we will actually see that uh, tomorrow, or maybe later today. Whatever. It'll be another replay. Um, I go against the same guy, and I bring the same build. Um, to see what he'll bring to sort of deal with it. Um, so I just brought the exact same thing. At least I think it was the exact same thing. Yeah, I've got a feeling it was. But anyway, so we'll see that uh, tomorrow. Just to show this is not foolproof. But in this case, it was very silly and uh, surprisingly good. Yeah, 99 and 134 kills there. Uh, 149 for Cetra, and frankly, the Nehekar Warriors actually do pretty well against Battle Pilgrims, which uh, I find surprising, honestly. Uh, but no, they did okay. I think it helped that they all got a bit bogged down, a bit damaged by, you know, fighting the cheaper stuff, which is nice. But I mean, I still had so much spearmen left. I still had a load of infantry, and yeah, all of my powerful units were still totally fine. Um, the only thing that really would have probably uh, been points against me, you know, looking at this build is the casket souls didn't have as much ammo left at the end that's about it really it was a little bit insane um so yeah a lot of fun this battle um but this this is actually very clever um because frankly tomb kings will rarely bring a sort of totally anti-infantry build like this um i've used a build very similar to this in the past um i often bring fewer battle pilgrims and uh i bring the holy wardens of lamazontal because that magic and fire damage is really useful in uh, a lot of matchups against the tomb kings but uh, drop a couple of the battle pilgrims you can bring um just more fodder frankly uh more archers is really nice go with a wider line and uh yeah the archers can get mad value because if you can have them spaced out enough they can get really good hits on sort of any lords and heroes it's very difficult to run back and forth to deal with all of them so it's kind of nice um, but yeah, weirdly, weirdly good, this build. Um, yeah, not in this case, 
But I've had great success with builds like this against Tomb Kings because you always end up you always end up fighting just hundreds of Tomb Guard with halberds and then you know like a a Necro Sphinx or something. It's yeah, it's kind of ridiculous and. So yeah, it's it's weirdly viable. It is weirdly viable. Uh, but in this case, I was building especially to destroy it. So it didn't work out so well. Pity. Anyway, so guys, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.